if you look at other potential points, right? Let me use just the thick circles as the training points and use uh, uh, crosses as other points that are not included in the training data. I may have points like that, like that, like that, like that, right? So if I look at the fourth order polynomial, as long as soon as I have any data that lies kind of beyond the uh, beyond the, uh, the the scope, the discrepancy between this point and uh, the fourth order polynomial might be extremely large, and uh, it's going to be much larger than the discrepancy between the the, the data not included in the training compared to a first order or zeroth order polynomial. So measuring the quality of a learned model should not be uh, measured against the, the training set. In reality, what we do most of the time is given a data. So let's say we have a, we have a bunch of data from one to one to k. So this is uh, basically we have k pairs of input and output. The common way is to split this data into two sets. The two sets are in sample and out of sample. So the in sample data are purely used to learn the model. And during the learning of the model, the out of sample should be completely uh, excluded from anywhere, right, in the, in the learning process. So you should never look at the out of sample during the learning. And only when the learning has finished, you are sure you have achieved the best model you can with the in-sample data. You then look at the out of sample to evaluate how good this model is. No, you're not allowed to go back and say, oh, I look at the out of sample. Now the model is not good. That means I have to go back and uh, uh, tune my model. That's cheating, right? That means you have looked at out of the sample data and then you went back to improve the model. You already know something about the out of sample data, right? The, the resulting model is not, I mean, it's a, uh, it, it's, you have snooped the out of sample data in the process. So uh, now the question becomes, what is the best way to train the best sample, uh, best model I can without looking at the out of sample data? How can I just look at the in sample data without knowing there are additional data out there and know that the fifth order polynomial is not as good as a first order polynomial? Well, uh, that's uh, the two concepts uh, relating to that is called uh, uh, regularization and uh, 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 cross validation. So let's uh, let's discuss cross validation first. So we, uh, as we just discussed, we have split the data into into in sample and out of sample, right? Uh, let's just call IS and the OOS. And uh, uh, cross-validation is basically saying that I want to further split the in-sample data. I'm going to further split the in-sample data into two parts. Okay, it's going to be split into a training data set and a cross-validation data set. So I'm going to use only the subset of the subset, uh, the subset of the training subset of the in-sample subset of the data to perform the optimization I have outlined uh, uh, in the last uh, two slides, either for regression or um, classification. And then I'm going to look at the cross-validation to assess if my trend model is good or not. And because the cross validation is included in the in sample, I am allowed to go back to the training set and adjust 
the parameters. For example, adjust the number of parameters. Uh, right. So, so usually, usually, if I plot the number of parameters, as the x-axis and uh, uh, the cross validation quality, right? And by the way, the quality can be measured using the same way uh, we, are, we are training the model, right? So, so in, the, in the regression, uh, we can just uh, use, the, use the mismatch, use the metric of mismatch between the input and output in the cross validation set, right, as a metric for cross validation. And in the uh, classification, we can use the cross entropy in the cross validation set as a, uh, as a metric for performance. And uh, if I have too few parameters, my quality, my, my, uh, quality is usually low, right? So, so, for example, uh, in, in the previous case, if I have zero parameters, my output is zero, right? I don't have any predictive power. So, as I increase the number of parameters, the quality usually increases, but up to a point. And starting from some point, the quality is going to decrease, and at some point, it's going to be even worse than if I have no parameters at all. So this is called the uh, overfitting. While on the other hand, it's called underfitting. And uh, the goal of cross validation is to figure out uh, what is this uh, sweet spot of the number of parameters, right? So in our previous example, uh, the number of parameters is uh, proportional to the order of the polynomial. So uh, if we have a zeroth order polynomial, we are underfitting. And if we have a fourth order polynomial, we are overfitting, right? So this cross validation data, data set, uh, separating that out is gonna help us uh, uh, figure out what is this point. It's kind of another optimization with respect to the number of parameters on the cost cross validation data set. And only after we have performed this cross validation, we then uh, decide what is the best model and uh, use the out of sample data set to perform a final one time evaluation of how good the model is.